In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Rave Bullet e-bike. Rave is a newcomer in the e-bike industry, and they've formed an identity around their motorcycle-inspired designs. The Bullet is their entry-level model. It is a Class 2 e-bike designed primarily for daily commuting and cruising around on pavement. The Bullet was shipped in a high-quality, durable box with lots of protective foam packed in. Nearly every inch of the bike had some type of protective covering on it, including these tire covers that I've never seen any other brand use before. They really did a good job on the packaging. So if you order one of these, you shouldn't have to worry about it getting damaged during transit. The Bullet is built with a steel frame, which makes it very sturdy and durable. This also helps it achieve a max payload capacity of 330 pounds, allowing it to accommodate different riders and carry extra gear if needed. The only caveat to steel frames is their weight. At 75 pounds, it's a little more on the heavier side, so if portability is a priority for you, this is something to be aware of. The 500 watt rear hub motor has 55 newton meters of torque and provides a sufficient amount of power. The bullet can hit a max speed of 25 miles per hour when unlocked, and the battery can last around 25 miles when using just throttle. Of course, the range will go beyond 25 miles when using pedal assist. The pedal assist is activated by a cadence sensor, and although it works just fine, it will not provide the same responsiveness and smoothness as a torque sensor. There are three levels of pedal assist modes, and they can be adjusted with the integrated black and white LCD display. It may not be the most visually appealing display, but it should be adequate for most people. The bullet comes with a 7-speed Shimano drivetrain. I do wish it had another gear or two, but it gets the job done. The 4-inch fat tires feel nice and stable when riding. However, what doesn't feel quite as stable are the mechanical disc brakes. They're functional, but they're just not going to provide the same level of precision and stopping power that hydraulic brakes do. Moving to the front, the bullet features a coil spring suspension fork with 40 millimeters of travel. This is also where you'll find one of its standout features, which is the motorcycle inspired headlight. This headlight adds so much style to its overall design and is by far the brightest integrated headlight I've ever seen on an e-bike. But the motorcycle inspiration doesn't stop there. Instead of a traditional thumb throttle, the bullet comes with a twist throttle. It's really fun to use and it fits perfectly with the aesthetic. But in my opinion, the real star of the show is the large memory foam seat, which is undoubtedly the most comfortable bike seat I've ever used. It's also worth mentioning that it's made of eco-friendly fabrics, and for added safety, there's an LED taillight tucked neatly underneath it. Pricing for the bullet starts at $13.99 for the entry-level model shown in this review. Rave also sells a higher-end model of this bike called the Bullet GT, with upgraded components and better performance. So testing out the Rave Bullet. This is not going to be suitable for off-road by any means. It does have a suspension fork in the front, which if I'm being quite honest, it's not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. It gets the job done. It only has a front suspension. It does not have rear suspension. But I did want to say, because the seat is so heavily cushioned, it's such a large seat it does not bother me whatsoever that it doesn't have a rear suspension i'm sure the, the rear suspension can help out even more obviously but this bike does not need it whatsoever the tires are nice and thick they're four inch that absorbs some of the impacts as well however coincidentally because it's more of a motorcycle inspired seat it's not adjustable so you can't move the seat up or down to fit your height you just have to deal with the shorter stance of how this bike sits so i feel like if you're going to be pedaling this bike a lot your knees may get a little uncomfortable over time, maybe long periods of time, which is probably another reason why this bike 
is heavily marketed towards using the throttle which brings me to the throttle this is the first e-bike i've ridden that has a twist throttle and i think that's just so cool especially because it fits the whole motorcycle vibe of this e-bike um it's just so much more natural i didn't think it would be this much fun but it really makes a huge difference in riding this bike it's just being able to take that throttle and twist it it honestly just feels so natural i love it so this bike is definitely catered more to people who want to use throttle almost exclusively you can pedal i actually have it on pedal assist 3 which is the highest setting it's not the most responsive bike i've ridden i can tell it's a cadence sensor so it'll take a few pedal rotations for it to sense that you're pedaling so it can turn on the motor but again this bike is mainly for throttle usage another thing i've noticed about the throttle is sometimes it reacts a little bit slowly i'll demonstrate that right here so i'm gonna activate the throttle and listen to the motor how long it takes to activate it know if you'll notice that but it's at least maybe two seconds of a delay so that's just another thing to keep in mind if that bothers you then you may want to look into other bikes all right so i'm going to do a max speed test one on throttle and one with pedal assist let's try throttle first Okay, so it looks like it's maxed out at 20 miles an hour for throttle only, which makes this a class two e-bike as advertised. So now I'm gonna do a max speed test on pedal assist. like it cuts out at 25 miles an hour so you got 20 max for throttle and 25 max for pedal assist not too bad it is worth mentioning that in order to access the max speed of 25 miles an hour you do have to unlock the bike and uh, that is provided in the manual all right let's see what these mechanical brakes can do at 15 miles an hour all right, not too bad. Not the worst I've tested, not the best either. But, I mean, they're mechanical, so just be careful because these brakes are not gonna be as high performing as hydraulics. So I do wanna go ahead and bring up the pedaling again, because when you're pedaling on a bike that has this big of a seat, your legs can get chafed a little bit, and I've noticed that. Just keep in mind, this bike is certainly more for throttle usage this is the entry level model so it doesn't have the higher end motor i'm perfectly comfortable it's got plenty of power for me personally i mean i've been staying in pedal assist 3 which is the max so i just want to see what it can do and i don't feel like it's underpowered at all something else i wanted to point out just so everyone is aware the headlight does not follow the handlebars. It's separated from the handlebar. So most bikes, when you twist the handlebar, the headlight will go in the direction of the handlebar. But on this bike, the headlight is disconnected from the handlebar. It's on its own mount. So when you're turning, the headlight will remain in its forward facing position. Normally this would be an issue on regular bikes that have regular headlights, but I will say on this bike, I have ridden it at night. It does not bother me at all. This light is super bright. It has that projector beam line, like a, an LED headlight would be on a vehicle. 
it's very impressive so if you're worried about the headlight not being connected to the handlebar that's really not a worry so don't let that veer you away from buying this bike Overall, the Rave Bullet is a great choice for someone looking for something comfortable and affordable without sacrificing style. While there's definitely some room for improvement, it is undeniably one of the best looking e-bikes for the price. Thanks to Rave for sending me this review unit, and as always, thank you for watching.